small boy, oh, I think about 10 or 11 years of age. I was working for me, living for Mr. Fuller, Mr. the late Mr. Robert Fuller, a boring or nice old couple. Everything went along beautiful there for a few days, and I thought, if ever I get big enough, I'd like to take on this sort of a job. And shearing time come round, and now he said, you're always talking about, he said, shearing, he said, my boy. He said, there's three or 400 sheep here, he said. Sharpen up your shears, he said, and let's see what you can do with them. He said, I don't shear care, he said, if you only shear 10 a day, he said, it'll do. And he said, but one thing I want you to know, he said, is uh, the sheep want all their skin and I want all the wool. I didn't take up Dover until 1918. It was a bit of a bad year in 1918. And I went out to uh, Miss Darry Taylor and Mr. Betty Carroll had a lot of sheep and they got permission to run them in Nango. And I was the fellow that took them out there and camped out there with them and cut them oak and stayed there with them for four months and never lost one. I was camped on the river down below Condoblin and there was an old man camped not far away with a sulky. And he came over to the fire and he said, hello, drover. Good night, mate, sit down. Had your tea? Yes. Oh, he said, I, when I was a young man, he said, I used to do a little bit of this drove, and he said, he said, it's a happy life. He said, take me back to the happy bushland where the air is fresh and sweet, away from the stinks of the city and the dens where the criminals meet. Let me ramble alone by the river where the reeds they bend and bow, for the drove a man has pleasures, what the town folk never know. 1908 I started shearing. I, I sure for, I think, till about 23 or 4. And the, and the wounded arm got very, very sore and stiff. I was uh, shot through the arm on the 16th of August at 10 o'clock at Pazers. Boulogne Hospital was run with by Canadian doctors and Canadian nurses. When I got there, all covered in blood and everything else. And uh, they dump you in on a stretcher. When you get wounded, you get a ticket tied onto you. Because you've got concussion and shell shock and that, and you can't say much. There's a lot of nice baths ready in the water in them. And uh, I don't know, of course, I didn't have too much of good senses. I don't know whether I took my boots off or not, but I rolled off the stretcher into one of these bars. And I'm having a terrible good time in this, and along come these orders, their sleeves rolled up, and they said, look at this fellow, he said, he's in, in and he's clothes on. You can see by the look of the house, I don't use too many dusters or wear them out or brooms or that kind of thing. I just look after myself, I get to poor old Mrs. Spicer to do me washing, and. I go around there and go and get a feed up the town if I wanted, or if it's, if I always keep a bit of some kind of tome to have me breakfast, and I go up the town in the middle of the day and get a feed, or perhaps at night. <laughs> Shut up, you dogs. Shut up, you dogs. See, I've got so many dogs for friendship. I've got six or seven, six or seven dogs. I suppose he's five-year-old now, Bluey. Oh, yes, my word, he's the best watch dog. If I camp out here, and there's a tent piece or a tarp holding up, he's, he, he's laying on the foot of the bed, or he's against me, and if he growls, you can bet your life it's something in two boots. Someday, dear old Bluey, you will miss me. When I cross the pearly sea, how I hope some good, kind friend will love and keep you, and sometimes you'll remember me.
Let's see. It's not that brilliant thing, is it? What is it? Not stuff you made yourself. No. Not in fact. You put a bit of centre, get a nice little bottle of centre, boil some mutton fat and drop a little bottle of centre in this way, it makes a very good air lotion. I think they might say it's a bit short, but you don't have to come so often. That happens. I didn't do for about a fortnight or three weeks now, wouldn't it? I went to the doctors to get my eyes changed. I asked them why my eyes got sore when I looked at TV. All the neighbours around had got them very kindly asked me to go and look at them. And I always noticed of a morning I had sore eyes. Well, he said, I didn't want to tell you this, Rick, but he said, uh, you're getting cataracts. He said, and I'd advise you not to look at it. Life's been very good to me. I wouldn't want to change it.